Alright, so nagbabalik tayo sa ating violin tips and tricks. And for today's video, let's talk about rhythm. Pero, hindi lang basta-basta yung rhythm, no? Kasi, we mostly associate rhythmic problems or anything related to rhythms with the bow, di ba? Di ba? Parang... Yun, rhythm yun, eh, di ba? Yung pagkakaiba-iba ng length ng notes inside a measure is what rhythm basically is. No, pero let's talk about the rhythm based on our left hand. No? Ano ba tong rhythm ng left hand? Kasi syempre, the left hand is mostly concerned, ganito yung iniisip natin, concerned siya dun sa intonation and vibrato. That's the main thing about the left hand. Its concern is intonation with regards to shifting and proper positioning of your fingers and, of course, vibrato. But, of course, we can always play with single strokes. Sometimes we do long strokes, diba? Nagkakaroon tayo ng slurs, ng ties, or whatever. And lumalabas doon na we can't control the rhythm anymore using our bow. So, where does the... Uh, problem arise is kung paano natin ginagamit yung fingers. How the fingers land still concerned with timing no? pero how the fingers are moving in relation to your bow. Yan. So yung rhythm na yun yung pag-uusapan natin. Ano ba yung mga pwede natin gawin with regards to these problems? So first of all, alam na natin na we're using our fingers para ilapat yung tono. Diba? So, kailangan malakas yan. Makakagalaw sila. And kung naririnig nyo, tumutunog siya. So, pag mabagal, let's say, tatanggalin natin yung, yung bow out of the equation. No? When we practice uh, rhythms with our fingers, tatanggalin natin yung bow dun sa equation. Kasi, if we do single strokes... Madali lang natin siyang mad madadaya. In a sense, nadadaya natin. You're cheating your way into properly positioning and timing your fingers together para maging maganda yung rhythm. Bakit? Kasi, na-offset nung bow mo yung rhythm na ginagawa ng iyong daliri. Dahil dun sa... So, try ko. Gagawin kong swing yung rhythm ng daliri ko. Pero gagawin ko normal. So, nawawala na yung pagka-swing niya. Pero, if we will do it na... Or, kung gusto ko siyang i-timing ng tama. Okay. So, ngayon, paano natin magpapractisin yung mga, ano, yung mga rhythmic problems na yan? So, ayun, pwede natin gawin to, di ba? Ayun. So, you can practice your uh, long bow strokes. Tapos, ito lang yung pagaganahin natin. Ngayon, the same idea comes in, di ba? Pag nagpa-practice tayo ng mga fast passages, di ba? nag -ano tayo, rhythmic exercise sa bow. Ginagawa nga natin yung... You can do it the same thing dun sa daliri. Ang focus lang natin dito is yung galaw ng daliri natin. So... So, pwede mong balik na rin din. And pwede mo namang bago-baguhin. Pwede. So, kahit paanong rhythm na ginagawa mo sa bow, gagawin mo lang dito. So, tinatanggal mo yung bow sa equation. Ayan. So, ano pa ba yung mga problems na nag arise kapag uh, hindi saktong-sakto yung rhythm? So, nawawala rin yung flow, di ba? Especially for slow pieces or slow passages, di ba? Minsan, kasi, basta na lang natin nilalagay yung daliri, no? Hindi lang nangyayari to sa fast passages. Mas prominent siya sa mga mababagal na piece. Let's say, itong Handel Sonata. Mara 
marami ditong mga legato strokes, di ba? Yun, yun lang yung scale na yun pababa, di ba? So, kailangan lahat ng ginagawa mo doon, pantay na pantay. Kasi pa hindi. So, dito yung mga exposed na exposed ka talagang kitang-kita yung difference ng paggalaw ng ano, ng daliri. Kung, kung tama pa ba yung movement or not. Because your bow is not going to help you. So, paano ba natin siya mapapantay? Is we have to think of the notes, no? The same way we think of fast passages nga, paano ba natin ginugroup? Let's say, meron doon passage na force by four. So, so minsan, nagagawa ng mga tumutugtugis. Kasi, binibigyan masyado natin ng emphasis yung first beat and fourth beat. And we've discussed this on a previous video, paano natin mapapantay yung force No, without using the bow pa rin, is we have to think more with the inner notes. So, yun 2 and 3. So, so, yung nasa loob mo, kasi giba ganyan. possible na pwede yung practices na gawin para sa mga rhythmic problems involving your left hand. No? So, kahit nga wala kang violin, no, pwede ka pa rin mag-practice na ito. Kasi it needs deliberate action from your uh, mind na dinidictate niya yung gagawin ng daliri mo. No? Kasi isa pa is yung proper form or framing. Kaya nalilate din rhythmically is masyado nating nilalayo yung fingers. Our fingers are too far from the fingerboard. So, the reaction time needed. So, for example, tumutugtog ka ng... ba? Diba? Basically, yung iba, yung mga nagsisimula pa lang, ganito yung form ng daliri nila. So, 3 and 4 are too far from the strings. So, ano nangyari? So, nag naglolokoloko na yung daliri mo, nag, nagkakaroon ka pa ng strain kasi gumaganito ka. So, what you want to do is make sure na lagi silang ready. So, instead of doing, uh, positioning your fingers like this, you should position your fingers like this. Ayan. So, nandun ka na. Diba? Less movement, uh, more deliberate yung actions. So, mas madali mo siyang matututo. So, you can do a lot of different finger exercises. And you can also do finger tapping lang kung wala kang ano, wala kang hawak na violin. You can always practice without your instrument as long as you know what you need to do. So, you can do finger tapping on the table or kahit dito lang din sa ano sa, sa thumb mo. Yan. Just make sure na they're strong enough to move on their own. Kasi ito yung importante when you're developing your fingers, di ba? Sa left hand. They can move on your, their own, but still remember yung spaces para naman sa intonation. No? So yung rhythms kasi kailangan nakakagalaw sila independent. Bawat isa. But still maintain those uh, intervals in between them. No? Kung, kung gano'ng kalayo yung one, alam pa rin nila kung saan sila magla-land. No? Kung ganyan ba yung pwesto ng daliri mo or ganun. So, yun. Kailangan pinapractice yun. So, again, you can always do long strokes. So, if you're doing long strokes tapos nag-ano ka ng intonation, you're hitting two words with one stone, di ba? While doing long strokes. So, kailangan mo may 
maintain mo din maganda yung sound. So, parang nag-open string ka. Kapag medyo nabubord ka na sa open string, you can do that as a warm-up, no? And then... Pero kailangan, yung distances in between nung bawat lapag mo, yung rhythm nga, should always be the same. No? Yan yung nagiging problem dito. Kasi, we tend to think na, okay, ito na yung bahala. So, bahala na rin yung pagpuesto. But, timing nga is really, really important. No? Kahit na hindi mo namamalayan, ginagawa mo talaga siya. So, you have to work on it. And, sana natuto kayo dito sa video na to. Also, check out my course on Udemy available pa siya and I think it's still on sale yan so check it out and salamat po sa lahat na subo support our now more than 900 subscribers konting konti na lang no uh, thanks to everyone please do support my channel like comment share subscribe to my channel and also check out my other content and I'll see you on the next video